YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. We've got the B47 again. Look at this thing. Looks like somebody crashed it. I don't know, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, this thing flipped over right here in our tall grass because I need to cut it. But uh, the cool thing about this plane is it's otherwise undamaged. There was a scratch on the tip of my wing and I just touched up the cow. So we're gonna fly this on 6S one more time and then we're probably gonna throw the 4S into it. And so we wanted to share a little bit more with you. Obviously reverse thrust is super fun. And as you can see, the damage from a few feet away is nothing. You good? <laughs> yep. All right, timer's cleared, not that it really needs to be. All right, take off flaps deployed. Here we go. Look at that, guys. Wind's a little bit lighter today, but it's still there. As you can remember from the other day, we had some intense sun. So we wanted to give you guys a shot in the more cloudy conditions. Because Silver Plains, by the way, that was almost idle, that pass was. Wow. Yeah. Feels nice. You remember how we set up a half AS3X setting and then a safe setting? We're gonna test that too. That sounds so cool. We're pretty much going into the wind now. Kind of curious how that's gonna film. Camera crew, let's go over to the edge so we can do some uh, bull flying. There's full landing flaps, by the way, just so you can see. No ballooning, pretty good roll authority, just having to get into the rudder quite a bit more. It's about 50% throttle, maybe 45, 40, 30, 20 here. Let's cycle the gear for you just so you can see how sweet it looks. And then we're out of that. And then out of the flaps, and this guy going by wants to see it, so I'm gonna give him a pass. This thing on 6S is just insane for power. Full speed pass. Because we know that's what you wanna see. And we'll come in over the Eagle Killing Zone. Feels super well behaved today compared to what we were dealing with the other day. As you could see guys, the wind was just intense. And it was one of those days where it started out just dead calm. Okay, full landing flaps coming in and gear coming down. I'm just curious how it'll feel if I try and approach. I may not even land. Okay, going over the Eagle Killing Zone, about 15% throttle just to help slow it down. Keep that prop tractor, and I wanna see how it looks. Oh yeah, gear going up into the power and full speed out of the flaps. Absolutely no problems there, getting it done. I wanna go into the half AS3X and see how it feels. Okay, so this is half the rates. I'm just curious with the wind, how it's going to respond. Are you good there, Kim? Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything feels pretty good. You'll notice I'm not coordinating my turns much. That's because I mixed in a 15% coordination. And as you can see, I haven't really had any problems with uh, controllability on this flight. Man, it must've been way windier than we thought that day. It was pretty windy. But also I feel like the elevator's not porpoising me at all because I cranked up my Expo and everything. Mm -hmm. Guys, just look at it. It's like I'm flying flat and level when I'm going up and down. I just love it. Really good controllable flight characteristics. Nice and tame. Actually, the half, the half rates feel really good. I feel like we might have been experiencing a little bit of jostling on the, the length. Are you in agreement with me on that? Um, like the rudder might have been actually kicking it around? Because I haven't noticed as much since we did that change in half. Hmm. And we're at one minute and three from being out here. Listen to the scream, guys. Man, that just feels so much more solid than I remember. It must have been crazy windy that day. 
Okay, full landing flaps, gear coming out. Let's see if we can pre pretend to take an approach here. About 30% throttle there, just so we don't fall out of the sky on that base leg. Getting down over the tree line, and then just really being careful. I don't want to hit the grass. You guys know I have a problem hitting the grass. Camera crew, let's go out in the middle. In the middle. Right there, perfect, thank you. That's great. I'm just curious how this thing's gonna show up against the clouds, what do you think? I'm worried that it's gonna be silhouetted, but when you're up close like that, it looks really good. I know, the silver the other day when we were filming with that bright sun was just absolutely phenomenal. But at the same time, it was like, at times, it was kind of like would blind you because mm -hmm. it's so reflective. I mean, it's like silver. It's not like a gray. And I don't know if you guys can tell that from the, uh, the footage, but it is a big factor when you get a blinding glare like that. Okay, full landing flaps here. I'm going into the wind at that angle. My heading is probably 15 degrees to my left. That's where the wind is. Throttle cuts on. Let's go look at the damage. I'm kind of assuming there's damage. What I was doing there was my typical, I felt like I had it under control. And what I did was I threw it into thrust reverse, but then in order for me to go back out of thrust reverse, I have to flip the position of my finger like this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if similar to my pilot fatigue mode, maybe I need to set it up like this, reverse, Oh crap, I didn't mean to go into reverse, that's regular. And this is reverse, and that's forward. So forward, reverse, forward. So you have an oh crap method either way. So no matter what direction your finger's on, because when you're a pincer grip, you have a different setup. So you'll be using your middle finger generally for this. I use thumbs, so I use my index finger, and it takes time to do this especially on a finger you're not used to using. I'm used to using flaps all day long. Right. But not reverse thrust. Oh shoot, there's a chunk of plastic right there. I don't know, that looks like gear. No, uh, maybe it's a gear door. That'd be like the best thing possible. Yeah, broke the front half of the gear door. That's all. That's, that's like nothing. I can fix that in two minutes. That's not bad at all. Um, is there any other damage? Oh, by the way, if you guys want to see, the braking is on, so that thing feels like it's broken when you... Look at this beautiful repair by That's yours awesome. truly. And there's some markers on there. And then same thing down here. And then I painted it with a marker. So yeah, I mean, you don't always have to do beautiful touch-ups. Um, and honestly, I kind of can't believe how little that damage was. That was nothing. I can literally glue that, it's just plastic. Yeah. And I just want to show you something too while we're at it, guys. We're two minutes over. Oh, I had a twist there. We're two minutes over. We got plenty of battery power to go ahead and do a takeoff. I just want you guys to see with the wind, takeoff flaps, ooh, canopy, canopy. Oh, popped up this first. canopy slides forward and back. Throttle cut is on now again. And you gotta be careful about this. That canopy will slip on you, okay? So we're gonna take off here. Oh yeah, we're good. Totally good, guys. Gear up out of the flaps, into the power, about 50%. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Let's show you a slow pass. You good where you are? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look how absolutely gorgeous that is, guys. Going over the tree line there. I'm gonna kick it up to the high setting for stabilization. Out of the flaps, into the power before I get into the turn so I don't lose it. Guys, you have to be aware of your wind conditions and you have to fly the wind. Just like other, just like other circumstances. If you don't fly the wind, you're gonna get burned. And that's what happened to me on that landing was I made, a, I made a stupid mistake trying to depend on the thrust reverse. Why did I do that? But at the same time, not a big deal. No harm, no foul. Let's get off the runway about 10 steps. Perfect. Here we go. Whoa, did you guys see that wind? <laughs> Holy cow. That was not by, that was the wind kicking up going up the runway, guys. You good? Yep. So you probably won't want to land from that. Oh, we're going to want to land against the wind, obviously. We don't, we don't want to land uh, with the wind with at our wind. tail. Okay, camera crew, you can stay there if you want. Okay, I will. Take off flaps, landing flaps. I do really kind of like that idea, folks. I think I'm going to try that. It's not going to take me but 10 seconds. Okay, full landing flaps. 
Just relaxing, letting it get down here. You see the bounce, folks? That is one of the, whoa, that was an insane gust. I could hear it in the trees. Man, did you see how much it changed the pitch of the yeah. plane? It was like absent any stabilizer, but I know that the stabilizer's on and working. Believe me, I can feel it. Okay, so we'll just go way out here. No warnings or anything, so we should be good on voltage. Okay, gear coming out, takeoff flaps, landing flaps, just kind of riding over that turbulation over the top of the trees. A little bit of throttle, you see that? That's over the trees. Okay, a little bit of, little bit of power, a little bit of power. Get here, baby, get here, baby. Woo, woo, woo! Oh, the dreaded grass! Goodness gracious, guys. Okay, throttle cuts on. It's like, it's like you know how you put two magnets and they repel? That's exactly what's yeah. happening here. I've got a runway right here, <laughs> and the wind is like, no soup for you! So let's see how this looks. Throttle kit is on. I can definitely say this thing has an efficient wing, and maybe I'm kind of screwing myself over by doing the, uh, the flaps all together. Maybe I just need to get it on the ground and then throw the thrust reverse. Does that look like, I can't tell if that looks like it's bent or if it's just in my head. Maybe that got bent just a hair. Uh, it, yeah. It felt pretty bit. good. Felt pretty good on takeoff. And just, just to reiterate the idea that this thing flies so efficiently and it's something we're not used to with foamies. So let's come back here, please. Throttle cuts off. Voltage. Still 21.7. Okay, takeoff flaps off. We're gonna take off in short field with low battery. Not the smartest thing, take off flaps deployed. Okay, we're gonna use forward thrust though. Look at that guys, out of the gear, out of the flaps. You see how easy it is to get up? <laughs> guys, that's on 10 minutes and a half of flight time. Well, maybe nine and a half. Nine and a half minutes of flight time, folks. This thing just flies super efficient. And so when you go to land, if you get a little gust of wind up under that sucker, she'll bounce and she won't, she won't even apologize, you know? It's just like, hey, look at this bounce, boom! 20 feet later, you're like, oh, thanks. I should have my vario on so you can squeal too. Boop, boop, beep, beep, boop, 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 boop. Okay, here we go, here we go. Way too fast, way too fast. See, see what I'm talking about? I hit the runway though. That, you did. You know, it's like, you watch me land this thing, you're like, this guy's never landed before. And I, I, mean, I assure you, I have landed planes before, I promise you. But I think what's happening is, it's hard to tell, but you see about where the plane is, the driveway starts to dip down. And what happens is when we get that wind, Believe it or not, we get a lot of lift right there. And so it's like, eh, it's right about the time you're getting out of ground effect and you're relaxing into it. And then it's like, ooh, look, more lift. All right, we're gonna try again. We don't end on a bad landing. Okay, so in typical Brian Phillips fashion, 21.5 nominal volts. We're gonna make this, we're gonna make this serious now. Take off flaps, here we go. Out of the gear, out of the flaps. As if it weren't already tough enough to land in the wind on a short strip, hemmed in by the trees. We're just gonna do it on no battery too. So here we go guys, going way out there, just letting it slow down for once, instead of forcing the issue like I normally do. Right over the turbulation, you can see it guys. Okay, full landing flaps. Oh, nothing guys, I got nothing. We're going back around. You'll notice I'm buying a little altitude. That's insurance, it's cheap insurance. Keeping my base leg nice and flowing. I don't wanna have a sharp turn. There we go, right over the trees, right over the trees, guys. Woohoo! Throttle cuts on. I told you we would get it. We would get it eventually. So, you know, in typical fashion, we got it after we crashed three times. <laughs> but uh, it did live to see another day. It did. No landing gear bogeys broke at all nope. in the making of this video, except for, except for 
this. Except for that thing. Right. Well, that's not a bogey. That's a gear that's door. Who cares? I could cut that out of a cup from the, you know, gas station. Which you would do. Yeah. Then I'd pretend it was beautiful. But anyway, there you have it, guys. The P47 on 6S is still good. Still good. And I honestly, honestly say that it is seriously growing on me. This is one of those planes where it's like, okay, don't take it out there and fly it in horrible weather the first time. Yeah. Because you're gonna sit there and you're gonna gauge the plane's performance based on a bad experience. It's just like, well, I, I can't make that equation. So what I'm, <laughs> what? So what I'm gonna suggest is that you wait for a nice, beautiful day and you just, you know, you can lallygag around and you can take advantage of a beautiful day having no problems in life other than maybe the fact that you had to put this plane together and it took a little bit longer than a normal foamy. Look how beautiful it is. I love reversing these things. But anyway, my whole point is if you force the issue on a plane like this, you're probably gonna end up regretting it because you can see the way that it bounces. It punishes you if you get anything other than a greasy, perfect landing. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I, de I think I must have bent that one gear. That one gear door on the right, it bends in on each landing. So even though I've tightened the screws, ground handling feels very good, by the way. They are very short landing gear. You can see also the grass is very tall here. Um, so like maybe if I cut it, it wouldn't be quite as tall. What do you think? <laughs> That's usually the way it works. So throttle cuts on, reversing is off. I've been super happy with this. We're at uh, whatever that is percentage wise. What? What was that? What was that? What was that? So anyway, um, I would say this plane is definitely a good plane. 6S moves it fast. It lands fast. It is challenging to land. And unless you have like cut your grass in the last six months, then it's, you know, you're probably going to stick to some sort of a paved or, or smooth surface. I would definitely say too, that in terms of looks, build quality, phenomenal. It is good. It looks good. It is not super scale. It is, it's got some scale lines to it, but it is definitely not super scale. So if you're wanting super scale, uh, Hangar 9 has in the past made other P47s. But this one here is more of a sporterized version. And they call it, what do they call it? Fun, Fun scale. scale, like whatever that means. So anyway, I, I don't, I, if it was up to me, I would just have the full scale appearance. The problem is they get heavy. And when planes get heavy, they fly different. But you could see my landings. What was wrong with my landings? You could use a little weight. In yeah. The plane. Yeah, that's true, I could. So anyway, hopefully this video has been informative in some way and you enjoyed watching it. What we'd like to do next is if we have enough time, we're gonna throw in a 4S and fly it, but uh, I have to uh, go off camera to get permission first. Otherwise, buy that thing from the link below. If you don't wanna buy that thing, we got PayPal and Patreon. Thanks guys, stay tuned or have a good day. <laughs> I got permission. <laughs> yes, you do have to change your audio vents. That looks so beautiful. But uh, just to be totally clear, I just wanna point out something. Uh, this, this prop would have looked so much better against a not crash cow. I thought you said we weren't focusing on the damage. Oh, we aren't focusing on the damage. Sorry guys. Reverse thrust still works, that's good. It sounds cooler. Okay, so we have our alarm set for 3.3 volts per cell or 12.9. Hopefully that's correct. Okay, 4S, timer set for five, here we go. Oh yeah, buddy, that sounds great. Did you hear it? Mm-hmm. Well, oh, it's got that more growly sound to it. Whoa, that was kind of scary. That's right, I don't have 6S. I have to like actually pay attention. Let's try doing some ups. Man, that thing is powerful still, but it's different power. Oh, do you hear that awesome, that like vibration noise? Yeah. yeah, it's kind of weird. I wonder what that is. Hopefully it's not something that's like gonna be a problem. Okay, 15% throttle here, 30% throttle. 
It gets out of the hole really quick, guys. Look at that. Amazing pulling force now with that bigger prop. It's actually bigger, but it's got a, a shallower pitch. Man, that looks good. You see what I'm talking about, folks? The 6S is great, but it's just a different flying experience. Oh, and then by the way, 5,000 4S all the way to the front. Landing flaps coming in. Look at this thing slow down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Are you laughing at my oh yesing? No, never. You shouldn't. I love the sound. Yeah. It's different. It's more different -er than I thought it was going to be. It's way more different. -er. <laughs> so, folks, in conclusion, um, I'm going to go to the middle. Whoop, that was safe. Sorry, I went too far on my switch, just like what happened earlier. Well, I didn't actually go too far. I just didn't have a, I didn't have an easy out. Okay, so this is half stabilizer. Let's see how it performs now. I haven't talked a lot about upside down performance just because I don't get into it and I'm not a really good upside down flyer. I prefer to keep my feet under me. Love the screen, listen to the screen. So folks, I'd, I'd say 4S is pretty good, but my predisposition is, let's see how it slows down and get the gear out. Let's see how it feels. Let's see how it feels. Okay, here we go. Man, that feels pretty good. Gear going up. You know, I, I haven't made up my mind if this model, if the gear bogeys look a little bit short or if they look right. Do you have any sort of thoughts on that camera crew? I don't From your extensive- think I'm qualified to comment on- Is that Oh, come on, you're qualified. Plate. You've seen more planes in your six and a half years or seven years of helping me with this and most normal humans. That's true. Okay, I went into full AS3X mode. Let's go ahead and uh, just see how it slows down here. Going to the low point here, trying to keep my base leg nice and soft. A little bit of rudder there. This is where it bites you, folks. Yeah, I was trying to abandon that and I got into the turbulence. As you can see, it's still alive, but that was a pretty bad bail. Hey folks, that is just your reminder for today. Better to go around. But I always love that from full scale pilots. I'm like, hey, listen people, we don't always have enough battery to get around. Wow, man, that wind. Yeah. All of a sudden it started pushing left to right. Pretty strong, but that should help us slow down too. The ground effect is gonna be exacerbated. You see what I'm talking about? Look at that. Mm -hmm. Woo! <laughs> oh, buddy. Hey, you know what? You know what just happened? Did you go off the edge? No. No, you're fine. Two landings in a row. Yeah. Okay, so just to be clear, folks, Okay, thoughts on 4S, because yeah, we can't run this all the way to the end. We got 18 seconds left on five. Okay, so I'm just gonna clear that because I don't wanna listen to it beep. Look at that. 15 minutes. You can squeeze a lot of life. 15 out of volts left. Oh, I'm sorry. Five minutes. Yeah, five minutes, five minutes. Um, if you have 5% left now, you can squeeze a lot of flight on a prop powered plane out of the last 5%, especially if you're in the air. So if you're doing landings and things like that, especially landings with like thrust reverse, you really consume a lot of juice that you wouldn't ordinarily consume on a landing. So a couple things to note, this is not like a huge runway, okay? It's definitely not a hundred feet wide and two miles long. So, but it, it is made of concrete and it's quite smooth. So, you know, like all the cracks are filled painstakingly by yours truly and her too. Mm-hmm. And all the four kids too. That sucked. That, that was, terrible. was terrible. If you guys ever decide to fill your yeah. cracks with this stuff Don't do in the this. back of rod, uh, hire somebody else mm -hmm. to do it. Yes. That would be a great idea. Because uh, unless you hate life, unless you hate yourself, then hire somebody else to do it. Because that was a terrible project. Um, it, it does seem to have worked, but I'll let you know how that works after I plow the snow off of it here in like three days. 
Seriously? No, I'm just I kidding. Was say. <laughs> There's not snow in the forecast that I know of. There might be. So anyway, uh, in closing, the P47 in the fun scale, uh, whatever you want to call it, repertoire, I would say that this plane is beautiful. It does the job. It's a little on the light side on windy days, which is weird. Um, you would think that'd be like generally a good thing. And I think on a very calm day, it's gonna rip the skies like nothing else. I mean, it's gonna be really cool. But when you come into land, it feels like ground effect is about a hundred feet tall. And you know, so, so it is a challenge for people that are newer pilots. Um, it definitely not a first time plane, uh, definitely not a beginner plane. This might be like your fifth or sixth plane if you're really skilled as, as a new pilot. Um, NX-8 has been great. AR-637T worked really nice. We have the boop, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop, which is always handy. It uh, doesn't really make sense on this plane, but it's still cool that we have it. I mean, having a barometer on there means there's other things you can do too. It's not just boop, 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 beep, beep, boop. You can set your altitude limits and things like this, and you can get fancy with that. You can set alarms and all this good stuff. So like, if you really wanna make sure that you don't go over 399.9999999 feet, like most of us who are good compliant people. So anyway, um, yeah, wonderful plane. Uh, we only crashed it twice so far. And really technically the crashes were like pretty decent landings with bounces. Um, you know, well, 30 foot bounces are not decent usually. But I'm just gonna remind you, if you're new and you're thinking about this plane, keep thinking about it. Don't buy it. Buy something that's more your speed. You're gonna be disappointed when you buy a five or $600 plane by the time you're all in and it comes back in a body bag. So it's, it's gonna disappoint you. And you know, these manufacturers try to warn us about these things, but us RC pilots are, you know, usually it's kind of like when I wear shorts on a day like today, I'm not wearing shorts by the way, that's cold. Um, you know, we're in denial about some of these things when we're early and we just think, you know, I want, you know, it's like most of us are either really scared or really a little bit too proud to admit that we're not quite ready for it. This plane, I'm getting the hang of it. I'm feeling more comfortable with it. It kind of reminds me of the way I felt with the F-16. F-1680, one of my favorite planes. Now, looks wise, I like the F-16 a lot better because it's, you know, the F-16's here and just the way I grew up and the things I like. But this plane is good. I like the P-47. It's one of my favorite planes. Um, and to be honest with you, if it was another P-51, I think there would have been a mutiny. Um, <laughs> Although Horizon, if you're listening, go ahead and give us a P-51 now. <laughs> Put it in the comments below if you have something to say about that, please. Um, also, if you want to buy this plane, help support our channel, small commission from the manufacturers, not from you. You don't pay any extra. You don't give it up. And somebody asked me, do we, do we have like a different warranty if you buy from our links? No, you don't. It's just like buying any, any other way. The only thing that's different is that they know that we help direct you there. So you made your final decision because you watched our video or, you know, hey, hey, Brian does a good job. He helps me decide between, you know, this or an FMS or between this or, a, you know, whatever brand it is, an, an XPR or some, some sort of, you know, Eros hobby or bang good plane or whatever it happens to be. You know, we review them all. We really don't want to put you guys in a corner. The manufacturers want us to, to tell you to buy this. Um, but really what we want you to do is just buy something that's going to get you in the sky. It's going to keep you flying, something that's appropriate for your skills. Uh, something that you can fly legally, something that you can fly and really enjoy yourself and have a good time and, um, you know, help propagate a hobby that is just wonderful. And uh, that's, that's what we do here. So we, we hope that you guys are reading what we're laying down. But at the end of the day, that plane is a good plane. Uh, it is going to be for a little bit more skilled pilot. Uh, so, so don't go into it thinking you can be a, a new pilot because it has safe. You know, you can put safe on pretty much anything right now. So that is awesome, by the way. If I would have had that when I started, it would have been super helpful. Uh, instead, I had to kill planes that had safe and then make them work in other planes. And yeah, yeah. there's a lot more work. Your permission is expiring. My permission's expired. That means I have to wrap it up. Come back for more. <laughs>